So I thought it would be a lot of fun to go through what I keep in my everyday makeup bag because this is not your typical stuff that you just see in the, in your makeup bag. And the difference in my bag is that since I do try out so much different makeup, blushes, eyeshadows, liners, mascaras, that kind of stuff, none of that's in here. These are all staples that I don't necessarily use every day, but I make sure that they're in here so that I don't have to go looking for them. It's kind of like an everyday makeup drawer, but stuffed into this bag that seems really big right now. <laughs> It is kind of a, a, a lot of stuff in here, but I thought it would be fun to show you what I reach for, what things that I like to have just in case. But really quickly before we get into what's inside of it, if you're new to my channel, special welcome to you. I hope that you do just decide to subscribe, please. And don't forget to hit the little bell icon so that you can be notified of any videos that I'm having in the future. And then also, if you wouldn't mind giving this video a thumbs up, everyone, it does help my video out a lot and now that that's said let's get into what I've got inside of this bag and what it's stuffed full of first of all this bag is from pixie beauty it was sent to me as a part of PR I absolutely loved it because it was the lavender purple color I wish that they would put it out as part of their permanent line but I do know that you can get these bags this kind of bag just about anywhere okay so first thing when you open it right in between it I zip into it my mirror and this is my portable mirror and I use this every day and you would think that I would use something that would be on this vanity behind me, but really, I really don't use this vanity very much um, because my place is really super small. Usually what I end up doing is just doing my makeup on my bed um, because the vanity kind of gets, the chair kind of gets in the way unless I'm filming. So long story short, I keep everything in there like an everyday makeup drawer. So this is my mirror. I'm not gonna blind you with it, but it, this is a big mirror. It is the same size as what's here and I can't cover it enough to, well, I guess I can a little bit. Okay, so it's a huge mirror. Look, my hand goes to the top of it, goes way past my wrist. It's a big mirror. It's probably a, I would say it's probably a seven by nine mirror and it's beveled on the edges. It's a little bit thicker. This is great for travel because it is very compact, very slim. You can put it in anywhere. And then when you do travel, if you need the easel part of it, it does stand up. So love this mirror. I got off Amazon. Everything that I show you should be linked in, linked in the description box below. All right, so next thing in here. <laughs> I can't believe that I'm doing this. First of all, these don't stay clean. I don't know if you guys have the same problem, but they don't stay clean and they're just a mess. So I do wash them, but I haven't washed them for, for a little while. The first thing that I'm gonna pull out is wipes. I just buy the wipes that you get like at TJ Maxx or anywhere like that. Mostly I don't use my wipes for taking off makeup, but if I do get a little mess up, I'll pull a wipe out, I'll use that. And I always use these when I film too to take off swatches. So I always have wipes inside of there and then you guys are gonna think I'm absolutely crazy But I have a ton of primers in here now. Let me tell you the reason I do try out different primers all the time But I also use like three or four primers on my face, which is high maintenance. Yes, I know but what I do with them is different things that I feel like do different stuff for my face. Okay, first of all, if you're an oily gal, you wanna perk your ears up because this is a really good mattifying primer from L'Oreal. It's their infa infallible matte primer. And I use this around my nose and around my chin right here and you know anywhere I feel like I'm gonna get breakthrough. So that's kind of my T-zone, which is right in here. I get a little bit of breakthrough as I sweat and as it becomes summer. So I use that. So if you are an oily skin girl, you're gonna love that. And then I've been testing, this one is from Fenty Beauty. This is their Pro Filter. Love this stuff. This is very blurring, but it's very light and it doesn't feel like the heavy dimethicone ones. I'm sure that it does have a little bit in it, but it just kind of perfects the skin. I actually really, really like this and I think I'm probably going to purchase the big size of it, but it just seems to just give me a really Really beautiful soft canvas blurs out all these big pores that I have so that the texture is less noticeable on my mature skin and then this one I bought very recently this is hard candy sheer envy hydrating primer 12-hour makeup grip 
plumps, moisturizes, and, and perfects. This is a little bit of a jelly formula, so it's not really, I don't even know if you're gonna be able to see it, but it's just got this hydrating property to it, and I really, really like it. It just seems to sink into the skin, and it does have a little bit of a gripping property to it. So this is one that I've been testing out for a while. Doesn't feel sticky, though. Uh, testing out for a while, and I do like it. It's very light if you are, in the summertime, you're dry, but you get a little bit more like I do. You get just a little bit more on the normal side of skin because you sweat or have menopause or whatever going on. This one's really good. And then I got one heck of a blot in here. I think I've talked about this a lot. This is, again, another mattifying one that I'm testing out with the L'Oreal one. I don't know. I just put the, these extras in here so I can test them out. Again, this is one that keeps you really, really mattified and you know, it would be like using a blotting paper is what they're talking about. And this, these two I have in here, this is the Lormi, bleh, this is the L'Oreal Lumi Glotion and then the Becca Backlight Priming Filter. And I put these in as dupes. Today, the Lumi Glotion is what I mixed in with my foundation. And that's actually what I do is I kind of am trying to use this the Becca because I've had it for a while and I really do need to use it up before it goes bad. So I, I love this one, I think a little bit better because I think it glides across the skin a little bit better than the Becca. But the Becca has its place too good dupe. I think I showed that to you guys in a video very recently. I always have in here my two color correctors from LA Girl. These are the Pro Conceals, but they're the correctors, and I have peach and I have green. If you're a darker skin gal and you have bad um, under eye circles, go for the orange. It would work really good for you, but the green works really good for me as far as how uh, red the redness I get right here on my cheeks and if I get any breakouts, which... I have menopausal breakouts right now, which is driving me crazy. If you do have places on your skin, say like um, dark spots, the pink is really good for that. Or if you have dark skin, the red is really good for that. So those are invaluable to me and I use them all the time, especially when I get breakouts for that green. It just helps so much to hide the imperfections on my skin. And then I carry around these three correcting pigments for my foundation. But this one I use as a mix in medium for my foundations as I'm getting a little bit more self tanned and my foundations are way too light. This is a really good color to mix in. It doesn't add too much orange. It's just a really good color. I don't even know if you can get this anymore. I've had it for quite a while, but I mix it in and it just does the trick really well. And then the ones that are too dark, I use the LA Girl Pro Coverage HD uh, long wearing illuminating foundation and i really do like using this it mixes in with all the foundations i have and it doesn't go very matte and i really like that about it but the blue as you can see the blue is the one that i use the most because any orange or yellow foundations and i'm a very cool gal i will use this to mix i in. do have so, a complete tutorial on how to do that so i will link that for you as well but yeah this is one of my saving graces is the blue mix in medium or the found yeah the foundation mixing pigment from LA Girl. So if you've been somebody that always finds the orange ones, that was me. I always found the foundations that were yellow or orange and this just really has saved me a lot of money in the long run. So love using that. You guys are going to think I'm absolutely crazy and my three sprays for my face. All right. So the Max Fix Plus I use to spray my makeup sponge. By the way, I do keep a makeup sponge in here at all times. It is what I use to put on my foundation and my concealer and my powder. So that is in there at all times. But I usually, I not usually, I always spray with Max Fix Plus or a primer spray. Hard Candy has a really good primer spray. Um, there's all kinds of companies that have a primer spray. You don't need one, but look for them that don't have alcohol in them because that's going to dry your foundation out even more if you're using that to lay down your foundation. So yes, I do have that in there all the time. This is not a setting spray. And I do have this, which is an an alginest bottle. However, this is not alginest spray. After I was done using this, this sprayer is so fine and so lovely that I just put my setting sprays in here from now on, especially the ones that I like the setting spray, but I don't like the actual sprayer. It kind of spits at you, which I think is ridiculous. So I will put it in here. So I think that the one that I have in here right now 
it was one of the NYX Radiance finishes one and I really wasn't enjoying that. So I just mixed in like a regular natural setting spray. I think I got the natural one from Wet n Wild. So that's what's in here right now. Just love this sprayer. And then this one is from Flower Beauty and this is my final one that I use and this is their Illuminating Setting Spray Seal the Deal. And I love this stuff. It's so much like the L'Oreal um, Glow Spray. I have that one too, but this is a much better deal and it's almost the identical product so yeah you get a lot more in here all right i feel so weird in showing you guys all this you this is actually a lot i know that it's a lot i'm not trying to tell anybody to go out and get all this but this is my job too so i kind of feel like you know as i test things out or as i have my favorites they get stuck in my bag and that's where this lives and this is the lancome absolute powder in absolute golden this is the most beautiful finishing powder i've ever seen i continue to look for a dupe for it but there is really no dupe for it you guys honestly it's just a beautiful ethereal gorgeous like just perfecting powder and i use it as my last step before i put on the glow spray and yeah there has been nothing that i have found that really is comparable to that not even the hourglass ambient setting powder or lighting powders those are beautiful, but I still like this one better. And it just, it has to live in here because I love it. And yes, I do continue to look for a dupe for it. And I'll tell you that the Milani Prep Set and Glow, it's really close as far as a dupe for it. It is a dupe for the Hourglass ones, 100%. I use this one more to set my under eyes since it is a little bit more on the matte side with just a tiny bit of glow in it. And it's just really kind of a perfecting powder. So I love that one. That one lives in there too. Right now, I am in love with the number seven. This is the Lift and Luminate Triple Action Translucent, Translucent, Translucent Finishing Powder. And this one is in light. I really love this, you guys. I think it's one of the best powders I've ever used. And I don't know where number seven's been my whole life, but I am totally over the moon enjoying number seven. And then this is the Pat McGrath one. And honestly, I'm not super impressed with this, even though I do like it, it's okay. It does have a tendency to dry me out just a little bit too much under the eyes. So you have to go really super light handed if you have creasing underneath your eyes or dryness under your eyes. Be real careful about this. I did put this in a dupes video that the e.l.f. HD finishing powder is a dupe for this. And it is. I just happen to be wanting to use this up because spent my money on it. Don't want to, uh, you know, go, let it go to waste. Okay. Couple of the tools that I use. I always have a fan on hand, which right now, holy Moses. And one of you lovely subscribers sent me this beautiful fan. I absolutely love it. Anyway, so I always have this on hand either to dry my face after I use my setting or finishing powder, or just when I get a stinking hot flash or it's just way too hot in my room, which it is right now. And I just... I've used one of those for years. And then now, I have a Kevin Aquan eyelash curler. My Shiseido one um, that I swear by, the little um, rubber thing right here wore out and I'm just waiting for a replacement. But this is the Kevin Aquan one and I like it as much as the Shiseido one. But I think the Shiseido one is quite a bit less expensive and it does the job a little bit better. It just has a, less of a curve right here. And I think that is really the key why that one doesn't tug on your lashes this one doesn't tug very much either but i don't think that it curls as well either so like that um this is something that i think that you would want to invest in and a good eyelash curler i mean you can go through 15 at the drugstore and feel like they're pulling your eyelashes out all the time why not spend the extra 10 or 15 dollars one time it's not gonna tug on your pretty lashes so i feel like that's really important and then of course my sephora guide tape I did try the e.l.f. one and the e.l.f. one would not stay would not stay stuck onto my eyes while I was doing my eye look. So this is a must for me. I have several backups. When they come back in stock, I order like three at a time because I never want to be without this stuff and I love it. Um, if you haven't seen me do the tape before, go back and look at my seven looks in one palette, the Sydney Grace one, and I use tape in almost every single one of them. All right, so we're getting down to the last here. Oh, here's another thing that is invaluable, and sorry because it's dirty and full and yucky. <laughs> but this, I believe this one is from Revlon. Wait a minute. Nope, this one is from Maybelline. So this is a duo um, pencil sharpener, invaluable. But what I like about the Maybelline one is it will 
have this, um, I don't know what they're called, insert on it that will adjust the size. So if you have a smaller pencil, jumbo pencil, you can put that in there. You have a really big one, you take the insert out, you can do the bigger one too. So I love that. This has lasted me forever. I really like that it has the guards on both sides. And then it also does have this little tool right here on the end of it, which I love that you can pick out all of the little crayon that gets into that. So you can get it really, really clean when you're ready to clean it. So sorry, my one's been clean. I don't have a favorite tweezer. I am, uh, I'm on the hunt guys. So if you guys know of any that are just fabulous, would you please let me know? Because I would love to know that. This lives in my bag because this is probably the best eyeliner I've ever seen. This is black, black. This is the waterproof physicians formula eye boosters. It's supposed to have an eyelash growth serum in with the actual Actual waterproof formula of the eyeliner. So I think that's great. I love how pointed and how easy this is to use. It's just really fine and I use it to only go over my lash line on the top and just super, super tight line in the eyelashes and just really find that it really works well for me. This type of one works good for me because of the shaking of my hands and I can just use it and not have everything move around and wiggle and make a mess like I normally do if I use a regular one. And then I have two eyebrow highlight pencils, but my favorite truly is the Wet and Wild one. Wet and Wild one. I'm just trying to use up the Benefit Highbrow. This doesn't have any glow in it. The reason that I love this one so much more, I think, is because it is just so much lighter and pink more and more pink than anything. This one's a little bit creamier though. I will say the benefit's a little bit creamier, but the reason that I don't like it to be so creamy is I find that halfway through the day, it's worn off where the Wet n Wild one that has just got a little bit more thick of a formula, I can still blend that out, but it'll still be there at the end of the day. So that is what I wear in my waterline, which by the way, stays in your waterline a long time as well. Okay, this is what I use for my eyebrows right now. I do try a bunch of different eyebrow pencils, but I fall back to the NYX Micro Brow. And I think this one is in ash brown. It's just the perfect color for me. It's not got too much orange in it, but it's not got too much ash in it. And I just think that it's a really great color for my coloring. And it's deep enough that I can still get, you know, a darker eyebrow without looking black. So I like that a lot. I've always really liked that. Oh, by the way, that has a spoolie on one end if you've never seen that before. Guess I should show it to you if I'm showing you stuff. So it's teeny tiny. I mean, super itty bitty. And then I use this little elf. I think this has fibers in it, but it's the setting um, mascara for eyebrows. I lost my train of thought there, excuse me. So I love that that little mascara wand or the little, you know, wand is teeny teeny and I can, you know, go across the eyebrows and not have to worry about having the big thick ones because most of them are the big thick ones. This is from NYX. This is the Multitasking Mixing Medium and I've talked about this a lot on my channel and swear I was gonna do a tutorial about it and never have. You can mix this with any powder product and make that powder product completely waterproof. So if you have a look that you're wanting to do and you're wanting to do an eyeliner but you don't have an eyeliner the color of the look you want, you can mix a powder from the palette that you're working with in with this. Use a little precision pencil liner brush or something like it and it will stay there all day long. I also have used this for making a matte lipstick or a colored lipstick out of an eyeshadow that I like or a blush that I like and it stays all day long because it will dry down to that matte formula and then you put a gloss on it or whatever you wanna do there. But it's been really invaluable to me. Now, if you're somebody that loves to wear glitters, this is like glitter glue basically so you can make that stick too. Favorite eyeshadow primer of all time is my Anastasia Beverly Hills. This is the mini tube. I think I've had this for almost a year now and it's still going strong. I'm not gonna run out of this. I don't even think she sells it in the big tube anymore. I know that they did when they first came out with it, but I don't think it is anymore. But look at it, you guys. It's so opaque and it just makes your eyes just absolutely pop. And so if you're somebody that you know, has a lot of redness, a lot of darkness, and you can't seem to get a real good look there on your eyelids with your shadows looking like muddy or too dark or whatever, this is going to help your eyeshadow pop. And for me, that has been so good. And then the very last thing, believe it or not, we're done. <laughs> the very last thing that does live in here is even though I try 
tons of mascaras on my top lash line this is the only one that will go on my bottom lash line because this stuff is not going to smudge it's not going to budge it's not going to wear off during the day flake off during the day this is going to be there till i take it off at night with my cleansing oil and it is the benefit they're real uh, mascara the reason that i love it for the bottom lash line besides the fact that it's going to be there forever is it has the coolest little wand and i'm really hoping that you're going to be able to see it the wand on the end has these you know it sticks up it's got these little bar it looks like barbs all over it and it's kind of you know just fanned out and that when you run it like this along the bottom of your lash line instead of going like this i always make a mess with my uh, mascara when i do that so if i run it like this though my dog is hitting the camera <laughs> if i run it like this though it is going to pick up every single lash and it's going to define every single lash and it's going to be there all day and i'm not going to have to worry about it so yes that is everything in my makeup bag and now it's all out of here and i have to put it back <laughs> thank you guys so much for spending a bit of your day with me today please give this video a thumbs up on your way out of here i would really appreciate that i hope everybody is doing well i hope that you're happy and you're healthy i hope things are going well where you are we've had a little bit more of an outbreak with the covid virus um, where i'm at and it's kind of scary kind of a second wave so i hope that your loved ones and you yourself are doing well and that everything is going good for you I love you guys so very much. Thank you for all of your time and your love and your um, wonderful thoughts that you give me in the comment section it just makes my day. So love you guys very much. Catch you all in my next video. Bye guys.